Hello, and welcome to QuantPy. In this video, we are going to show that the Brownian motion paths are not differentiable anywhere. This is an important property of the Brownian motion. Before we start, let's recall the definition of derivative from calculus. A function of x is said to have a derivative at a point, say x0, if the right and left derivative limits exist and are equal. The derivative limits are defined as follows. Here, h represents a small change in x. In the first limit, the values of h are assumed to be positive as it approaches zero, whereas in the second limit, its values are restricted to be negative. Let's reiterate that both these limits must exist and must be the same for the derivative to exist. Let's apply this definition to some simple functions to refresh memory. Let's start with x square, which we know is differentiable. Let's calculate the right derivative limit first, where we replace the function f with the square, expanding the square and simplifying. We get the familiar result. We can repeat the procedure for the left limit, and we will get the same answer. As both limits exist and are equal, we say that the function is differentiable at x0. That was easy. The only tricky part was the right and left derivative limits. These are easy to remember with a simple visual. Let's plot the x square function and let's assume we want to calculate its derivative at the green point. Let's start with the right limit. We take another point on the graph to the right of the green point and we draw a line through these points. This line is the right derivative. And if we take its limit, meaning we let h go to zero, then we get the right limit derivative. Now we can draw the left derivative and let the distance on both sides go to zero. You can see that both lines approach the same tangent line and this tangent line is the derivative we were after. Now let's apply the procedure to the absolute value function whose derivative at zero is not defined. Substituting the absolute value function in the right limit, we get Substituting 0 for x0 and noting that h is positive, we get. Now let's calculate the left limit. Again, substituting the function, we get the same intermediate expression. However, h is assumed to be negative, so the absolute value essentially multiplies it by minus 1 to make it positive. As the left and right limits are not equal, we say that the function is not differentiable at x equals 0. We can now tackle the Brownian motion path, which we show as a function of t. Substituting the Brownian motion for the function in the right limit, we get. Now, to simplify the expression, we have to use a slightly different technique as we are dealing with a stochastic variable. Let's represent the expression inside the limit by x. We can easily calculate its mean. And variance. And we also know that x is normally distributed. So we can write x as standard deviation times a standard normal. You can easily verify using basic properties of normal distribution that both representations have the same mean and variance, so nothing has been lost in the translation. And we continue with this new expression. Now we show that. In the limit as h tends to 0, with probability 1, x, take a value larger than any arbitrary value, k, which one can set as large as 1 like. Now, probability 1 is as certain as it gets, so this would show that the limit does not exist, and we know if the limit does not exist, then the function is not differentiable. Substituting the expression for, x, we get. We can take the positive square root of, h, to the right hand side, to get. Taking the limit, and evaluating the limit, we get. As, z is a standard normal, this last expression essentially means, what is the probability that, a continuous standard normal variable take a value, different from zero? Obviously one. We have shown that with probability one, x can take a very large value, as h tends to zero. And large value means, that the limit does not exist, which means, it is not differentiable. And this holds, for any, time. T. 
We hope you enjoyed the video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next when we explore more properties of the Brownian motion.